channel. Today's video is going to be another video in my back to school series. If you couldn't tell from the title, I'm going to be doing like a top five things that I wish I had known when I started college or five things that I think are really essential to know when you're starting college. And I couldn't really find many of these videos on YouTube. Ones that I did find weren't as much tailored towards um, like actual academic things you need to know. They were just more kind of like social things. So I just wanted to do like five things that I wish someone would have told me before I started college. So I have all of them on my phone here and I made a little list just so that I don't forget. Number one, don't ever buy your books from the bookstore at your college if you can help it. My first semester of college, I ended up buying about $600 worth of books at my bookstore just because I thought that that was the only way to get my textbooks. And no one had ever thought to tell me that you could rent your textbooks and you didn't have to rent them from the bookstore. You can rent them online for a fraction of the price that you would pay if you buy them. I think this is especially important for like freshmen and sophomores. If you're just taking general education classes, you're probably never going to need those books again. And yes, you can sell them back to your bookstore most of the time, but they won't pay you near what you paid for them. Um, I think yeah. this last semester I rented my textbooks, and it only cost about $200 to rent all my textbooks, whereas it would have probably cost upwards of $600 to buy them all. And then you just have them laying around when you're done with them. So there's all kinds of websites to rent textbooks on like Chegg, um, Velour Books, and many other ones. I can link those down below. And all you have to do is get on your school website, find the books that you need, and copy and paste the ISBN number into a website like Chegg or Velour Books and so that you can make for sure you're getting the exact same book, but you can rent a used copy for seriously so much less than you would pay for buying it. Okay, number two is something that I guess a lot of people probably do know, but I just I had never been told this, or I guess I just didn't really know this when I started college, but you always need to try to take at least 15 credit hours a semester. That's considered a full load of classes. Um, you can be a full-time student and only take 12 credit hours, but if you do that, you're not going to graduate on time. And when I first started college, I went to a two-year institution. I think I've said that a couple of times in my videos, and my first semester, they talked to me to just taking 12 credit hours because I said that that would ease me into college and get me into the routine. Okay, so I thought my advisor, of course, would have my best interest in mind and know what I needed to do, so I took 12 credit hours. Um, if I had kept doing that, I would definitely be behind right now, but I actually started out college with nine credit hours that I had taken previously in high school, so I wasn't behind, but if I hadn't done that, I would have been behind by one class. So you always need to try to take 15 credit hours a semester just so that you can can keep on track and graduate on time. And I think a lot of colleges, um, or at least I think this was the case with what happened with me, I think they try to keep you as long as possible because the longer that they keep you is the longer they're getting your money. So, I mean, the college that I went to is a transfer college, so I'm sure that they try to keep their students as long as possible. So I really wouldn't rely on your advisor um, to kind of tell you everything. You kind of have to figure things out like that for yourself. Get on your um, school's website, look at your career map, look at the curriculum that you need to be taking, and try to take 15 hours a semester so that you'll stay on track. Okay, number three is something that I had a super hard time with, and it's kind of messed me up a little bit, um, and it's kind of something that you don't want to hear, but if at all possible, you really need to have your major in mind when you start out college. Um, people had always told me, you can take your general education classes and not worry about it, and then when you get done with them, that's when you can decide. Well, that is not entirely true at all. If you don't really know what you're wanting to do when you start college, you're going to get set back a little bit. I didn't have a clear idea of what I was wanting to do at all, and I kind of took classes that weren't tailored towards that. So now I'm having to back up and take a few classes that I could have took when I was a freshman or a sophomore. So if you can, you really should try to have a pretty good idea of what you're wanting to major in when you start college so that you can take the classes that are necessary for that. Now, number four is something that should be common sense, but for me, I guess it wasn't. Um, read your syllabus front and back. Read it twice. Read it three times. Make sure you know every class's syllabus. Make sure you know what you're going to be expected to do in that class, all the homework assignments that you're going to have. Um, the syllabus is really important. I feel like in high school, they gave us a syllabus for the classes, but it wasn't really important because they made sure that we did our homework on time. Um, in college, they do not care if you do what you're supposed to do. 
it's kind of just up to you. So make sure you know everything in that syllabus and make sure you know what is going to be expected of you from that class. The number five is the last thing. This is not really an academic thing, but I think it's really important that you are comfortable being alone, but also that you try to at least have one friend or acquaintance in every class that you have. In high school, you're most likely going to have friends in every class because you've known these people for a long time, but in college, it's really easy to just kind of stay to yourself and be a loner, but really, it's good to at least know one person in every class because there might be a day that you miss a homework assignment or that you miss a class and you don't know what's going on and it's really handy to have one of those people's numbers or have them on Facebook or something like that just so that you can get up with them and figure out what you missed and also if you just need help on a homework assignment maybe they would be willing to help you so I think it's really good to at least know one person in each of your classes. So that's it for the five things that I wish I would have known when I started college and that I think are really important. I hope this helps someone out. I know it's going to be different for everyone depending on what college you're going to and what your plan is, but I do think that at least some of these could be helpful for everyone. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. As always, I would really appreciate if you would comment, share, and subscribe, and I hope I'll see you next time. Bye.